Good morning everyone, I'm Tanya the Starlet Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Firstly, I want to apologize for not getting my video up yesterday, but here in the camper and here in Northwest Arkansas, we had tons and tons of rain yesterday. And you can hear all that on the roof when that's happening. And then on top of that, we also had a whole bunch of thunder. <laughs> And a lot of wind so you'd hear all the plywood around the camper banging around and that's no <laughs> so I thought it would be better to just put it off until today so here I am better late than never I suppose but um, I do want to note that since my channel is still on the small side I don't have access to the community tab to post messages up for you all to see when that kind of stuff comes up but if you follow me on Instagram, that is my best way of communicating with you if my upload schedule has something like that happen. But before we move on to other stuff, I do want to say a huge thank you to each and every single one of you who left such kind comments on my video last week. It was very uplifting and very touching that we have this community who is so supportive of each other when you know things aren't going so well things are a lot better now this week so I'll talk about that towards the end and before we get into the stitching I want to tell you a little bit about Sandy her channel is stitching with Sandy and I like to watch her because she does a whole lot of smalls they're very cute and she has such adorable finishes for them and she talks about how she does that now I believe she is a kindergartner teacher as well so whenever I see a floss tuber and they're a teacher all I can think of my head is like man you know she's so fun I kind of wish she was my child's teacher you know <laughs> so but anyhow she's really fun and Go check her out her channel is also I believe under a thousand subs the last time I watched her video this week so let's all go over there and check her out if you haven't seen her already I'll link her down below so you can go and do that now with everything that was going on around here in you know my real life I did not get as much stitching done in this last week as what I normally do but I do have two finishes, so let's start with those. Firstly, I am so happy about this one. I finished my American Deer. Let's see, oh, oh my gosh, there's glare everywhere. Oh, that's even worse. I'm trying to get this as good as I can but this is what happens when you don't have museum glass guys but there he is I did frame him myself this is a frame from Hobby Lobby I'll put the item number in the description box below this mat in here is also from Hobby Lobby the frame is a 16 by 20 this is not a standard mat for that size frame it's custom cut because he's kind of weird sized now let me tell you how that went I went to go and get the stuff so I could get him framed up and stuff I didn't have him with me and he wasn't finished yet and I asked him you know can you cut this mat I have all the measurements and everything and for some reason they didn't want to cut it for me I don't really know why they said that I had to actually have the piece with me. I don't know. I guess maybe they don't trust my own measurements. I don't. I have no idea. But I was just like, well, I don't think she was having her best day. And I don't think I was having my best day either. So, <laughs> But um, on, in hindsight, hindsight's always 2020, you know. If I ever even have a mat done with this, I'll keep that in mind and see if it goes better. But as it was, I just bought the whole giant thing that it comes in, which it's like four times this size. So I'm like, oh man. And let me tell you, I do not have the proper tools to cut those. To cut these mats, they're like really thick. 
and I don't want to say it's even like cardboard. It's like, it's thinner than cardboard, but it's really, really dense. Like almost like, almost like wood dense, almost like, you know, this thing on the back of your frames, this stuff, it's almost like that. That's how I do not recommend unless you actually have the proper cutting tools. As it was, I did this with a, so you can see <clears throat> close up. Mm. It's not perfect, like up in that corner. It's a little bit uh, that corner. Down there, the paper had ripped, so I kind of just tacky glued it back on. <laughs> so, is it perfect? No, but I did do it myself, and you know what? He's done, and that's good enough for me. But as far as cutting these border mats on my own again, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> but he's so good. I was going for like a, you know, a deer in the woods kind of effect. I like this frame because it's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of beat up a bit and it's gotten, well, you know, it kind of looks like a log cabin type of, a, type of effect is what it looks like. And then that's why I chose the dark green mat. And I think it went pretty well to compliment him but my husband is super proud that I have this done and so he's so he's been all like bragging about it to his friends and family was like my wife did this and she did this just for me and I'm just yeah <laughs> I'm so I'm so happy that he is done now because the glare is, you know, not the friendliest today on the, I do have a better picture over there on my Instagram of him in the frame if you want to look at him better. <laughs> but let's go on to the other finish. The other finish that I have is I finished my Ukraine piece. It's Slava Ukraini by Long Dog Samplers. <laughs> and I turned it into a little pillow. <laughs> now I did, um, what'd you call it? Change the chart a bit. I took off the words and I reversed the bird and they're not centered off of each other they're each centered off the butterfly that they're closest to and that's what I did and I took the words off the the word Slava Ukraini that means glory to the Ukraine which for them is like a patriotic phrase so for the like us in the US how we say God bless America People who don't live in the U.S. probably would not say that, and so that's kind of how I felt about Slava Ukraini. It's like I'm not I'm not somebody who lives in the in Ukraine, so I changed it up a little bit, and you know with the Ukrainian colors of the yellow and the blue, you know I'm still having this the sentiments that go into this piece, and. The other thing that I changed was there is some backstitch that goes on the little sunflowers. I decided that it, look, it looks okay without it, so I didn't do the backstitch. And on the back, this is my backing fabric, which I believe I had picked up at Walmart some time ago. It probably came in like one of those um, pack of five fat quarter bundles that they have. But I had already had that. I was like, oh, that will be perfect. And so I just did a slip cover. And on the inside, I used scrap fabric to create a little pillow. And I, that's what I stuffed and then, and then closed that up. And then I put it in there. Because I like this slip cover finish. That's the easiest way for me to do. Because I don't have a whole lot of experience yet. On like, you know, whip stitching and all of that. But that's what I did for this. It's really cute. I like it. And I was happy to have another finish this week. Okay, so moving moving on. We're going to do progress from what I did the most on to, you know, the other direction. Okay, first up is Unicorn Poop for Sale. This is my Heaven and Earth design. And there it is. It's this cute little gnome. It is a retired chart, so I'm sorry about that. I don't know if the artist has her stuff charted on other websites or not, but it's not available on Heaven and Earth Designs anymore. But 
but this is where I'm at this week on it. Mm. So there we go. I filled in some more of the sky and it's got some more of a, I guess it's like grass in the hat and you can see a lot more of the leaf. Now I am completing my threads when I get down here into this other page down here because I'm going to be moving across this ways. So it's going to be a while before I come back down here and I don't really want my threads hanging for that long. So I'm just finishing them up so that it kind of cleans it up a bit for me. This is being done on an 18 count Easy Grid Ada and I'm stitching two over one full cross for this. And there it is. I really like how that's coming out so far. Okay, so next up we have Teresa Kogut's Land That I Love. Okay, so I did pretty well on this one this week. And here is where it's at. Oops, there we go. Now I'm stitching this one on a 32 count Silvery Moon Lugana by Witchell using the called for flosses. And there it is. So this week I put in the swing of the eagle. I thought this was a fruit bowl, but when I went to go and stitch, I was like, I don't think these are fruits. I think they're olives. Let me hold that up closer for you. See how it's got that little red dot in the center for like the olive eye? So I think they're olives. But anyhow, I did that and I did this horizontal mini border thingy across there and I got started on the strawberry bush. Yeah. <laughs> now I did find my first mistake in this. So this has this has received the Starlet Special like 90% of my other projects <laughs> because by the time I figured it out, like it's on, it's on here. What had happened was I did this leaf on this border right here. This was not stitched properly. And so this right here is not in the right spot. And I didn't figure that out until I was like, you know, it was almost all the way done of what I have all the way low, like over here. And I got to saying, I was like, hmm, this isn't quite matching up to these other things on how it should. And I was like, well, it's only one stitch off from where it's supposed to be at. So I decided to just leave it in. I fixed the leaf so that it will match the others in the border. Like, you know, this one up here, so it won't be, you know, that won't be sticking out like a sore thumb. And I decided to just leave this here where it's at. It's probably not gonna be that noticeable whenever the piece is done. And so that's what I decided to do. I just have to remind myself not to count off of this because it's not in the right spot. Count off of other stuff. And there we go. Oh, and believe it or not, this is still page one that I'm on. <laughs> There's a bit of strawberry bush. And then I'll be going down into page four. These pages are really huge. I think that they might have more stitches on each page than even Pandemic does. But, yeah. But it's going, so that's good. And speaking of Pandemic, it's by Long Dog Samplers. And let me show you how that is going. We had lots of dark days again this week. So I didn't get to work on it hardly at all. And then also, here, let me show you how that's going. The whole thing all at once. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna focus in and show you what I did this week. I finished this area down here. And I did this owl with these plants here. And then I went up and did this rabbit and then this little area with this bird up here. That is what I did this week. So that was not as much as what I normally put in every week on this, but um, 
what I had left to go was there was a lot of uh, switching back and forth between different pages. Like this whole area down here is going to be, you know, page 8, page 13, 14, and page 9. And I just wasn't in the right frame of mind for a lot of this week to be able to deal with that. So I worked on other things. But as I said earlier in the video, things are looking a lot better this week. And so this should be getting worked on quite a bit more again. Hmm? Now, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, I was going to tell you what I'm actually stitching this on. So this is a 28 count Haunted Lugana by Picture This Plus. And the color is DMC. One of these days, I'll actually remember to check this before I start my video, but it's DMC 3756. And I'm stitching that two over two. And those little butterflies up in there, those are back stitched with DMC 647. You would think I'd have to check that every week because I used hardly any of that and I'm touching the 3756 like every time I do this, but I don't know. But that is where that is at. So let me put that to the side. And I also made a new start this week. It's not what you think though. Sorry. <laughs> but since I finished my American Deer, I started another 11 count kit to fill in that same time frame that I was doing American Deer in. Because I wake up every morning Anywhere from between 4 and 6 every single morning, even on weekends when the kids don't have school. That's okay. Have it, I guess. And so I'm in bed every night by 8 and I'm asleep by like 8.30 or 9. So it comes around to 5 or 6 in the evening. And so not only is, you know, daylight's going away, so that makes things harder to see. But I also have eyeball fatigue. So that makes it difficult for me to work on other stuff at that time a day, even when it's like, you know, land that I love that's on a lighter fabric or unicorn poop for sale, which is also a lighter fabric. So, cause I did give that a try one night this week. I was like, no, this, it's not going to happen. It's, it's just not. And so I started this. This is a kit by Madeir. It's an 11 count pre-stamped kit. That is what it will look like when it's done. And here is where it's at. I have worked on this two evenings this week. I did the little birdie here in the corner because I wanted to have another little sort of mini finish for myself. So I did that first. And then I came back up here to the unicorn's head. And I'll be back stitching as I go because when I was stitching this, it looks kind of weird without the back stitch. So yeah, I'll be doing that as I go instead of all at the end. But there's, that's where it's at. Now this one is, in, is intended to be um, a gift for one of my nieces this Christmas. So it does have a deadline and I do have two more kits that I need to finish by the same time. <clears throat> The plan is, is to turn this into a pillow for her and the same thing with the other two. They're all about, all three of them are about the same size. They're all sisters, so it's going to be fair. The only thing that's going to be different is the design. And so my plan is to have those done before Christmas. Now, if we get into November and I have not finished the three, then I'll need to stop and focus them down and get those done. But otherwise, I, my intention is to basically, like what I said, they'll be taking up the time frame that I used used to use to stitch on American Deer. So I'm heading into Christmas present stitching now. So yeah, we'll see how that works. Like I said, I have a backup plan. And yeah, but I think that we will be all right on that. And so, I was planning on starting Bloom Where You're Planted, but Land That I Love and Pandemic are kind of, um, I kind of feel like I need to catch up on those a bit. And so I have decided to put Bloom Where You're Planted on the back burner temporarily and 
start this up in May. So that's what I will do instead. This will still be getting started soon. Just a little bit of a delay. And that's where my plans are at. And so let's get into the good news for real life this week. Okay, so if you remember last week, I uh, rem I'm reminded you guys that me and my husband have been trying to buy a house for the last like 15 months. It's been Calling it a nightmare would probably be the nicest way of saying it. It's just been awful. And, but, my husband fired those lenders finally. And so what I have to say is, if you're even thinking about using eLend, don't. I am advise you right now to go over to Google Reviews and every single bad review that somebody posted up on there, we experienced it from the excessively slow, I mean, taking forever to process any documentation, the having to repeatedly submit our stuff to them because they said that they lost it, the failure to communicate with us about anything that was going on. I mean, we had an appraisal happen and we were told nothing about it until eight weeks after the fact. I mean, that's ridiculous on stuff like that. I mean, that's insane. Just insane. But anyhow, so I'm just telling telling everybody, don't, don't use them. If you have a friend that's trying to get a home loan, tell them to run away and run away fast. Like, I kind of, yeah. Let's try, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So with the new lenders, it's going a lot better. We have had more get done in this last week than the entire 15 months of trying to work with eLend. That's yeah. Our new, our new lender, he goes, I can't believe you guys don't have a house already. Like what's like, like what's going, let's, what's going on here? Because most people your age have tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt and all this other stuff going on. They don't have good credit. You guys have really good credit. You have the income and you also don't have any debt. You don't even have car payments. So what all is going on here? I was like, yeah, we know, we know it's not us. <laughs> And it's not like, I mean, you know, I know you guys have, 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 you know, heard people say stuff about millennials. Well, me and my husband, we are millennials. And people say bad stuff about our generation all the time. Like, oh, well, I mean, so you can't go on to home purchasing forums and, you know, talk with other people about who are also going through this process because you get told stuff like, oh, well, you know, you must be failing because you're trying to buy a six hundred thousand dollar house on a mcdonald's wage or you know you must be having be one of those people who have to have the newest tech or the newest car every year and we're just like um no or you eat out every day and it's like okay i admit it we eat out like once a week but you know if you was living in a camper and couldn't cook maybe you'd be eating out that much too okay so i will give them the whole eating out thing that could be better but you know what everything else is just not true like i'm filming my video right now on an iphone 6 okay that's how old our stuff is and we don't we don't do any of that whole keeping up with the Joneses stuff. And we're not trying to buy a $600,000 house either. We know what we can afford and we're looking at appropriate homes for the income that we have. Anyhow, that all being said, we found a house down over by uh, Little Rock. Now what we're uh, what we're looking at is manufactured homes because we have property already. It's not quite two acres. It's like 1.6 or 1.7 acres and it just doesn't have a house on it. It's pretty expensive to build a site-built home from the 
from the ground up. So usually what most people do out here is they go with the manufactured homes because it's built elsewhere and then, and then put on your spot, you know? But anyhow, we found one down over in Little Rock. It's already built. So all we have to do is survive escrow this time, hopefully for the love of God, and finish our prep work over there on the property. What we need to do is we need to do our septic and our foundation because it will be actually going on the ground. It's not going to be staying on a the axles I guess like you know what you see in like a, like a trailer park how they're brought in and they they stay there you know the single wides we'll be getting a double wide and it will actually be going and fixed to the ground like a normal house would be and so what's encouraging about that is with our new lender the title company already has all the stuff to deal with our our mortgage and the prelim and other preliminary documentation they need to get the ball rolling over there at the title company and our contractor already has the schematics for the house so that they know you know what size does a septic tank need to be and where exactly does um the different parts of the foundation need to be laid out at I don't, I don't know exactly how that works, but they have to do it a certain way because pipes for like your water and stuff have to come in at certain places. And so the schematics indicate that and all of that engineer type of stuff. But our contractor has that already. And so as soon as our mortgage closes, he'll get his money so that we can do that stuff and then the house can come here. So once we get out of escrow, all we need to do is we need to wait for good, for good weather. It needs to stop raining because we can't do that stuff when the ground is wet. <laughs> because if you try to put your septic in and the ground is wet, what happens is, is it doesn't sit right in the ground. And so when you flush your toilet, you want the stuff to stay in the septic instead of like, you know, exploding it and coming, you know, going everywhere else except in the septic. And so you have, that's a pretty important part to making sure that that gets laid properly, probably TMI for some people, but you know, that's kind of like, you know, logistics, but uh, I'm feeling cautiously optimistic about things right now. Like I'm actually starting to think I'm ahead, like, you know, maybe this will finally happen. And I actually really like this house. I'm, and because the floor the floor plan is a lot better and plus i mean you can't beat the fact that it's already built so we don't have to wait you know eight nine months or whatever after esco closes from them to actually build it so maybe maybe guys but i'm actually allowing myself to think about stuff like you know we're here in the camper not all of our possessions are in here like i have board games i have you, you know, I don't have all of my clothes in here because there's not enough room, so I'll have all, all that stuff back. I'll have, you know, my kids will have all of their toys back and, you know, just all of the stuff that we have had to live without this entire time will, will it'll, it'll, it'll kind of almost be like opening Christmas presents when we can, can, you know, take our boxes out of storage and put them in our house and take everything out and put it away it's like oh I forgot I had this I'm so glad I have it back and um, I don't know hmm? but uh, yeah hmm? so that is where that's where we're at and so hmm? please keep the good thoughts prayers and vibes going for us that things will work out this time and yeah hmm? But thank you so much, everyone, for watching, and I will be back next week. Bye.